Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo. And it is time for us to embark once again on our journey in the Pokemon Premier League, season number three. Our week one opponent is Mounte and the esteemed immunity idols. Naturally. 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 His information, as well as all the information of the coaches that we will face this season, can be found in the description. I will also start with the team builder at the beginning of this video. If you wish to jump straight into the sacrifice, <laughs> into the action, feel free to look for a timestamp below. For those of you who would like to know more details about the nitty gritty that we're going to get into today, well, here we go. First, let us review our opponent's team. Tropagos, Weavile, Clefable, Infernape, Flygon, Sceptile, Quillfish, Indeedy, Vicavolt, Driftblim, and Electric. His Terra Captains are Sceptile with Fire and Ground typing, Indeedy with Psychic, Fairy, and Ghost, and Electric with Electric. Ice, Poison, and Water. Now we can see here his team has several modes. The redo of the rules of the league have prevented him from grabbing several Pokemon all on one team. If you recall the last time we faced him, he had access to Rillaboom alongside Sneasler, alongside other very powerful Pokemon. So here he did recreate a little of that unburdened core but you can see that Terrapagos was his tour de force on his first pick. So what did we decide to go with for this battle? Well, up first, we have our team captain, Darkrai. I decided to equip Darkrai with a Choppleberry for this matchup because I anticipated a Mach Punch uh, situation coming from his Infernape. I did not think he would bring in Didi to this matchup because even with the Terra typing, Indeedy to enable Flygon or Sceptile or even something like uh, the Driftblim with the Berry. Um, I didn't necessarily see that coming, although it was definitely a mode he could bring for this matchup. After that, look at his team and then look at my Primarina. Now look back at his team and look back at my Primarina. What does he swap into Fairy and Water coverage? Nothing is the answer to that. Oh, Quillfish, it, yes, it does resist both of those stab moves, but Quillfish is mainly a physically defensive Pokemon, so it does not properly resist these. It's still going to get two hit by any of Primarina's moves, especially if I throw a choice specs into the mix. I did go with Sparkling Aria here because Shed Tail was legal for this matchup, and if he just tried to do a Shed Tail into Tropagos or into Clefable or even into Driftblim and set up with it. I wanted to make sure that I could punish that because a sound type move would go right through that substitute. Similarly to how I started off with uh, my round one match against uh, Vepsis last season where I forgot that sound type moves go right through. We learn, we grow, and we conquer. My third Pokemon that I'm bringing to this matchup is my Arcaludon. Arcaludon is going to be modest with max special attack and max speed, with just coverage across his entire team. And very nicely here, I did tech Snarl into the mix for the same reason that I had Primarina with Snarl, uh, rather with an, a sound type move. Snarl here does hit Driplim harder, and it also stops Terrapicus from trying to set up with Calm Minds in front of Arcaludon. After Arcaludon, we have our defensive backbone of the team, which is my specially defensive Claude Sire and my physically defensive Bronzong. Bronzong will be our Terra captain for this matchup. For Terra Fairy Bronzong with Levitate fears nothing from his team. Claude Sire is here primarily because Clefable is absolutely coming to this matchup and I want to be able to take advantage of it on the field. I do have to be careful with Claude Sire for if he goes for physical attacks, 
Those can easily defeat Claw's Sire, and thus I have imbued it with enough defense to eat a uh, Scarf, Flygon's Earthquake, or a Physical, Terra Blast, Ground, or Earthquake from Sceptile, uh, but otherwise much more specially defensive. Bronzong will be our dedicated lead for this matchup, and Bronzong shall have Terra Blast Fairy, Heavy Slam, Trick Room, and Stealth Rock. If he leads Infernape, I will go immediately for the Terra and for the attack, but anything else, we will be setting up our Stealth Rocks against. Finally, the final member of this league's team for week one is Girder, the diminutive Girder. Up against his electric, it is about time we have a not fully evolved Pokemon showdown. Girder will be my physically defensive answer to Weavile because I can easily swap in on anything bar choice, band, uh, triple axle. And even if he does that, I can still take one and threaten with a mock punch. So if he is choice band, he won't be able to immediately revenge kill me with the ice shard. So that is this week's horrible horde and look forward to the battle. Thank you for sticking around for the team builder. <laughs> Now then, it is time for us to begin our journey in this battle against Mounte. You can see for this matchup, he has chosen Electric, Clefable, Flygon, Weavile, Infernape, and Terrapagos. We have our Choppleberry Darkrai, our Choice Specs Primarina, Specially Defensive Claude Sire, Physically Defensive Bronzong, and Girder, alongside an Offensive Custat Berry, our Kaludon. Right before this match, I did update my Arcaludon set and I switched it from the sturdy ability to stamina. I did this in anticipation of either getting hit by moves like U-Turn or maybe even getting chipped by moves from his um, not fully evolved Pokemon. I was very surprised in this matchup to see Electric, but with those different Terra types, I thought that maybe I could Fend it off with my Bronzong if I needed to, or if he decided to go Terra Water, we could take advantage of that as well. But Electric cannot hit very hard, so I definitely expected to see Super Fang to shave off half of my HP on any given Pokemon. So we do go with our dedicated lead here, and figuring that Electric will be faster than my Bronzong, we are immediately going to go for Stealth Rock. Now, I was not sure what he would go for to open up the battle with. Uh, Electric does get some interesting tech and utility moves. And of course, it can serve as a bulky Volt Switch Pokemon for pivoting in a pinch. He opens up with Knock Off, which I was a little bit sad to see. I really wanted Rocky Helmet here in order to help chip down some Pokemon. If, if his Infernape went for close combat into my Terra Fairy, then I could finish him off with two Terra Blasts instead of just going for one. Uh, similarly, if his um, Flygon went for U-Turn, I really wanted that chip damage, but we won't have that. There's the Super Fang that I did anticipate, and it is our first Trick Room of the season. Now, fortunately, he was faster than me, but now, after the Trick Room, I'm the faster one. And we're gonna go for a Terra Fairy Terra Blast, hoping to hit him before he terras his own electric, because he did not bring any of his other Terra captains to this matchup. Um, I could see Terra electric here, but um, I was more anticipating maybe Terra water so he could get my Claude Sire, but he's actually Terra steel. So here we have my steel type, losing its steely resolve and going more whimsical. And then we have this little slimy eel gaining its steely resolve and getting hard bodied. And as we see there, of course, he does have U-Turn and not Volt Switch, so it absolutely made sense there. But I was able to get a little bit more chip damage on the electric. It will not be too difficult for me to put it into range of some things, and he very nicely brings in Clefable here. And I went straight for that Heavy Slam button. With the weight that Bronzong has and the differential between it and Clefable, this is an easy to hit KO. And he goes for Moonlight. Now, you will see there that I picked up a little present, a sticky barb. There are no barbs between w rivals. I don't understand this. How dare you give me this bobble? I don't need this sticky barb and it's hurting my Bronzong. However, I respect the game. 
Sticky Barb, of course, whenever a Pokemon makes contact with the opponent holding it, then the Barb will stick to the Pokemon that made contact, and it will do damage over time. Now here I would have loved to give that Sticky, sticky Barb back, but it would need to go back to a Pokemon that does not have an item, and the Electric more than likely has the Eviolite held item. So I will not be getting rid of that present. I guess I'll hold on to it. I guess. And we're gonna chip down this electric a little bit more before we go down to the sticky barb. Now, fortunately, when we go down to the sticky barb, our trick room has also expired. And this is an opportunity, a gift granted by the barb. You live by the barb and you die by the barb. And this time we are sending out our Caludon for the first time into our battle. And it is time for us to possibly go for Aura Sphere. Now he did not bring Drift Blim to the battle, and so I thought that Aura Sphere would be a pretty easy move, but he could very easily swap Clefable in. But even if he did that, I could follow up with the Flash Cannon on the next turn. So here I did not fear going for Aura Sphere. Uh, the other nice thing too, is if he tried to swap out to something expecting me to maybe set up, I could just get some clean free damage on it. We do secure our first sacrifice of the season. Um, Bronzong, that life energy, that infinity, infinity energy going right here into our Caledon and knocking out that electric. Now here, I really, 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 truly, unfortunately, stay in now number one i ran a calc and i was like i can definitely live any offensive physical inferno pit here from full hp but remember how i said how i swapped our caledon's ability right before the battle i completely forgot that i didn't have sturdy and i was like no matter what i'm golden now number one he's a special infernape so if i had sturdy that would have brought me down to my sturdy and i would have hit him with the draco meteor but I swapped my ability to stamina before the battle, and so I just drop. The proper play there was just to go out into Primarina, easily. I even could have possibly gone out to Claude Sire because I put enough uh, HP and defense on it just so that it could live a, a max attack Jolly Earthquake from Flygon. But we just lose our Arcaladon. All that energy, energy just wasted. Alas, we're going to bring in our Claude Sire here, since he had Aura Sphere, I'm assuming he's gonna be more especially offensively oriented. And this means I can force him out, expect to switch into Flygon and go for Toxic. Toxic is going to, number one, put his Flygon on a timer. Number two, if his Flygon tries to substitute up and go for a Dragon Dance, he won't be able to do that for very long. Now here, I was kind of at a little bit of a loss. Again, an acceptable play would have been to go out to Girder or my Primarina, but I was like, I can take any hit from him. But in fact, his Flygon is Life Orbed. And so he gets that plus 30% damage boost, which I did not account for on my Claude Sire. And so my Claude Sire, much, my, much like my Arcaludon, just drops immediately. And you know, this is a horrible start to this battle. Honestly, I've had two opportunities where I could have gone out into Primarina and taken the hits pretty well. This Primarina is incredibly bulky. I went with specs with max special attack, but not even full special attack. I only needed enough special attack to make sure that I can KO um, some of his Pokemon with the choice spec. So I was able to pump a lot of extra HP, special defense, and defense into this Primarina. And you'll see that by the hit that it takes right here from the Flygon, like I could have easily taken this, uh, an Earthquake from it. Not two Earthquakes, but I could have taken an Earthquake from it if I brought it in fresh earlier. Fortunately, we are able to take out that Flygon. Very interesting tech there with uh, harnessing that infinity energy for his own purposes. We're gonna have to take a note out of that book that he's using there. Now here I made another mistake in the battle. I went to my calc and I went, oh man, Tropagos can't really do that much damage to me because of how much bulk I have. I'm gonna stay in and hit it. And so I stayed in and went for Moonblast, not realizing that I calced a level 50 Tropagos. Unfortunately, I don't know how much it mattered. The proper play would have been to swap out immediately into Girder. Because of Girder holding the Eviolite item, I get that plus 50% boost to my defense and my special defense. And that means that Girder can absolutely take that hit. Now, 
Did that matter in the long run? Unfortunately, I think the die is cast in this battle. Uh, especially, especially when I let Arcalodon go down the way that I did when I could have just swapped into my Primarina or the Cloud Sire at that time. Now we do still have Darkwai and Girder, and that means that these two are going to be able to easily pick up at least one more KO between the two of them. I go out to Girder here just to threaten out the Terrapagos, because I figured he would swap out into something. I didn't know what. I figured maybe the Clefable, but he doesn't know what steel coverage I have on the Girder for the Clefable. And uh, if he went out to Clefable, well, um, Girder can take at least a couple hits there and soften it up for Darkrai to knock it out. And then maybe I can live a hit with my Choppleberry against the Infernip and pick up one more KO there. So at this point, I was just going for differential. We want as many sacrificial pawns on the board as possible because that's ultimately how we're going to get more power. And, hmm, sacrificial pawns. If I'm going to lose this battle, what do we learn from it? What do I have? to gain. We see that that girder takes the hit, but we can't have this happen again. I think the best way to go about that, to prevent a future downfall, would be to make some changes. <laughs> to make a few adjustments. Um, make like a game company and maybe downsize a little bit. Uh, maybe there are some things that I can do to this team. It might get a little bit bloody, but if it allows Darkrai to do a lot more bad things to my opponents in the future, it might be worth it. Do you all hear that? Even in my loss, on this battlefield, you can hear what is coming. <laughs> yes, Mounte, I've lost to you once again. But thank you so much for allowing me to take just a little piece of you and use that for my own future plans. Make sure that you all come back to watch week two when we take on Wenzi Bennett and the Soli Vol Scarmors. This team will be looking a little bit different. And I can already taste just how dark it's going to be. Good night. Good night.